What's going on guys? National Master James Canty III here. Today, we're covering the French. You guys suggested it, so we're going to go over it. Here we go. These are my suggestions towards the French defense, playing with the white pieces. E4 and E6, D4, D5. So we have the French defense here, guys. And if you ever face the French defense, or if you haven't, of course, you're going to face uh, this, pawn, this pawn wall. This is a very common opening. It does happen. It's very solid for black. I actually used it myself up until I was about 1800 USCF. So very strong opening, honestly. But the problem is what we call the French bishop, which is this one right here. So this bishop actually has a problem because uh, his pawns block him in. So you really want a bishop outside the pawn chain, not inside. So, um, yeah, that's the problem here in the French. But this is a common way to play. You have knight to c3, knight to d2. Uh, you also have bishop d3 and e5. And captures. I highly recommend, guys, that you don't capture here in this position. The reason being is because you actually open up this bishop, and now it's not a French bishop anymore. It's just literally a even game, equal bishop, and it's doing just fine here sitting uh, how it is. This bishop has no problems anymore. So I tried that for a few years. I didn't like it too much, actually. And it's just not something you guys should be playing. If you do capture this way, the best way to play is with c4 to try to play very aggressive and play with an isolated pawn to play dynamically and play for tactics. That's really the only thing you can do there. Another thing, and I actually want to show you guys this one, is uh, the Bobby Fisher way is actually playing with the... Uh, King's Indian attack. If you ever heard of it, guys, you can play it literally against almost anything with white. Following the moves will be knight to d2, knight f3, g3, bishop g2, queen e2, castles, e5, rook e1, h4, uh, knight on d2 over to f1, knight h4, and knight to g4, h5, and bishop to f4. So that's usually the plan in every single King's Indian attack. Bobby Fischer was a big fan of it against the French defense. And he has a game, I think it's Bobby Fischer versus Pano. So you guys can check that out. I think it, that's the game. But um, yeah, that's how he played it here. He had a problem with the French in a way. So that's why he started using this. So after d5, it looks like knight to d2. Standard movement will be c5. Usually the pawn structure tells you where you should play. So of course, after c5 is happening, we follow up with knight f3. Knight to c6 and g3. Bishop g2 is coming. So they're going to play on the queen side like they should. You see uh, usual moves like bishop e7, knight f6. Let's go knight f6. Bishop g2, bishop e7, sometimes d6, but they do have to worry about e5. So usually they just go bishop e7. And then after castles, there's castles and rook e1. Or even e5 first. I like to do this a lot. And after knight to d7, rook to e1. Defending the pawn. They attack the pawn. This is usually standard stuff, guys. You'll see this all the time. And then queen to e2 to defend the pawn b5 because now they're going to start their their way knight f1 we're going to put our bishop on f4 a5 bishop f4 b4 h4 a4 and now at this point um this is called the bobby fisher a3 that's what i named it basically because i remember having positions where if they get a3 in you're gonna have a lot of trouble over here on the side of the board so you have to get a3 in yourself so after captures you actually stop queen side play for black and sometimes the counter play is knight to d4 for black and after recapturing with our knight, if we capture, the, the c2 pawn is slightly weak. So the rook uh, can sit on a2, actually, in some games that I have saw from Bobby Fischer, and actually defend the pawn on c2. So a pretty nice way to play that. Now, if bishop to a6, stuff like this, we're just going to keep our, our attack going. Maybe knight here, and then maybe knight to g4, and maybe knight d4 captures, rook a2. And I don't even know what you do as black here, because we've, we've stopped everything. We've literally stopped everything. Like, there's nothing, everything's blocked, and our next moves are going to be h5, h6, and, you know, knight f6 is a move here. Bishop h3 happens. So, I highly recommend, guys, of course, this is high-level King's Indian attack, but you guys will have many, many good positions with this. I remember playing in the open section back in, like, 2012, 2013, and, um, yeah, I had, I had a great tournament, actually, with this, with this opening. I played it twice. I think I played it against a French, and some other opening it, it just had to be something else i think it was against e5 but usually you guys don't want to play uh the king's indian attack against e5 i think i just played it that game for some reason but uh yeah that was back then that was definitely back then but king's indian attack guys i highly recommend that's something that you can play it's different and it's not what they're used to and you can have advantage just by that alone now mainline french would be e4 e6 d4 and then after d5, you have a number of moves here. I actually play the advanced variation now. I play the Milner Berry Gambit. You can reach out to me so I can tell you where I actually study my Milner Berry Gambit at. But Milner Berry, uh, Milner Berry Gambit is what I try now. I love it. I have like a 90% win rate almost with it. It's like excellent. I've been playing really, really good chess with that. It just fits my style. I'm a tactical player. So e5, it actually looks like this, guys. It's the advanced variation, right? And then in the event, any of, oops, sorry, not queen c7. 
In the advanced variation, after queen to b6, you will play stuff like uh, bishop e2. A3 is a move here. But actually, I go bishop to d3. And if you guys are not familiar with this tactic, here you go. Pawn takes, pawn takes. Knight can try to capture on d4. But the problem here is that bishop to b5, and there's the queen. Just have a nice day. Thank you, big fella. That's not a move. Bishop d7, thank you so much for the queen here. Have a nice day. So they actually play this instead. Bishop to d7. And then after bishop d3, bishop d7 to stop that tactic. And we let him have it anyway. Magnus actually has a game like this too. Topalov played somebody as well. Can't remember who. Excuse me. But uh, Topalov did uh, have a um, a game with white like this in the Milnerberry. After capture, 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 knight to d2. We have a lot of counter play here. Even though we gave up the pawn, sometimes you give up a pawn for initiative, for more development. And the, the key here is that... Especially after the captures, which is the main line here. You have bishop e3, b4, b5, a4 taking over the file. While he's still trying to castle in the meantime. Queen to g4 is coming in a lot of cases. So you have to be extremely careful here. One of the main lines that I do face actually is bishop to c5. Where I have some games against the uh, the Grandmaster Odessa. That's his name on Lee Chess. We have a few games together. And I'm actually up, I think, a game. Out of maybe four or five games, I'm, I'm maybe up a game or two. But against Grandmaster, his name's Odessa on Lee Chess. And after uh, b4, after b4 here, um, it goes takes, queen takes is actually the, the novelty. Knight takes f3 was the old move. And after bishop here, uh, queen to g3. It gets very wild, very wild. You take mine, I take yours. It gets kind of wild here. And white's the favorite in these kind of positions. But again, I'm a tactical player, so I love these kind of positions. I just started recently playing this, actually this year, for the millionaire gamut. But before... For the last five or six years, I was actually playing the win hour variation. And the Roman DG Hashvili, so make sure you guys look that up. His his last name spelled D-Z-I-N-D-I, -I, and then a whole bunch of other letters. It's ridiculous. It's like probably 26 letters, like the alphabet. So Roman DG Hashvili, last name. I think it's like 16, to be honest. 16, 16 letters for the last name. But after knight to c3, um, I learned a lot from him on this. And after uh, bishop to b4, which is the main line move, you will see e5 in this position. Now, after knight f6, actually, bishop to g5. And I'm, I'm just going over Roman stuff here. I had a lot of success with his uh, with his novelties and things like that. So I actually played this in a tournament game, actually. And then they played, I think they played bishop b4, takes, queen takes, and it got wild. After captures, you're supposed to capture on c3, but he actually captured here, allowing me to not double my pawns. He has double pawns. The game went on to be a draw as I just misplayed it. But uh, the game, um, I was doing fine. I was doing fine, actually. So bishop g5 is usually the move here. You could also play e5, which is the uh, Pintala Harry Krishna. Uh, he plays this, Grandmaster, Super Grandmaster. e5, he plays this variation, which I studied a little bit of that, too. I have studied both. Um, I still like Romans, but uh, Harry Krishna has some very sharp stuff, actually, on, um, on the knight of 6 version. He has sharp stuff, period. But after bishop to b4, the usual move, guys, is e5 because the pawn is, has pressure here. The knight's defending the pawn, now it's pinned. So you have the pressure, you just play e5. Mainline stuff will be like c5 and then I think a3 from the older books. But now, guys, actually from uh, Roman's book, of course, bishop to d2 was my choice here. And if you have captures, you also have captures on c3. You have knight to c6, you have b6, a6, knight e7, and knight h6. These are all moves, guys. All of these are moves. And bishop takes c3. And you also have queen g4 looming and these kind of ideas too. But the idea here, the main move is like knight to e7. This is, we're just going to go like main stuff. Knight e7 and then knight to b5. After knight to b5, bishop takes, queen takes. And I used to play this all the time. And after, uh, the pawn, after pawn takes, you shouldn't check here. The reason being is because they're just saying that this is like a patch or check kind of thing. But I think here might might be okay. You have to be careful when you check. I will say that, guys, because this might be okay here, but you have to be careful when you check. And if you see your opponent actually giving you this, you shouldn't always take it. Shouldn't always take it here. But let's see what happens. Castles, um, f4, captures, knight f3, knight to c6. And instead of capturing our pawn, we play bishop to d3. This is one of my favorite lines to show for a while here when I used to play this. After a6 is knight to d6, and then f6. We have to break up this pawn structure here. Castles. Pawn takes, pawn takes, and then black plays this cool move. Rook takes f3. You'll see this a lot in French defenses with this exchange sacrifice here. And after rook takes, then there's knight takes e5. And a, a little bit about development or just um, and material, period. When you're up material, you can always give it back. So after knight takes e5, threatening the rook, this is hanging too as well. So you actually play queen f4 and you give the rook right back. Um, the reason being, if queen takes, of course, you have mate on the back, right? 
And if knight takes f3, you take with the pawn, still threatening queen f7 in some cases. And uh, it's actually pretty pretty dynamic here. I mean, king h1 is coming. This bishop is helping, and rook to g1. There's a lot that happens here, and this gets very tactical, guys. Uh, very tactical. So I, I played this for a long time here, and I got the French over the board maybe like five or six times, honestly, um, in like a five-year span, which is crazy to even say. And the French was not played a lot, but... It was, uh, I did, when I when, when I played it, I didn't have trouble, especially with my bishop d2 lines, which is, this is the way that I like to play here. So I do recommend, guys, knight to c3 is a way to play. You may also face c5 if you are an, a, in a lower rated player, maybe under 2,000 or even under 1,500. You will see this happen a lot, and this is just an error. Now, there is a gambit, but n nine times out of ten, they're not gambiting this pawn. So after c5... The reason being is because we have this queen and the knight and the pawn all on the d5 pawn. So when we take here first, and you want to take on d5 first. I used to take on c5 a lot until d4 happened, and I was like, oh, this is a pawn sack. So after you move your knight, then they take, they get their pawn back. It's kind of weird. It's not, it's not what you thought it would be, actually. So you actually want to take on d5 first. And then after they capture back, then you take on c5, which makes it a little bit different. They still could play here, but it's slightly different. Bishop takes and queen takes d5, and we're up a pawn immediately. So it's no problem there, no problem at all. Now, this is actually what Bob, with, um, not Bobby Fischer, what Gary Kasparov was a big fan of is the knight to d2 lines. The knight to d2 is very, very uh, interesting. It's flexible. It's called a tarash, if you guys wanted to know. But this is um, Gary Kasparov used to play this quite often, actually. And it gives you very flexible positions. After c5, you actually play knight f3 instead of c. You could play c3, but knight f3 is the main move here. And I remember looking at a few games on just chessgames.com back in like 20. 13 maybe 2012 something like that but i was looking at i was looking at uh some chess games before i went into a tournament when i went into the chess tournament it was uh i played a uh, 2300 and he was i got a draw with white um uh, with a rook rook and pawn king rook pawn versus king bishop pawn but i played this for like the first first time like because I, I just wanted to play it i just saw a few games and this is the thing about the french guys like you have to find what you like that's why i'm giving you these options here because the french is not one that's extremely easy to just beat now it is in some ways especially if you get very nice positions like with the bishops on d3 those are fun because now you're like mating trying to mate but you have to find what you like do you like the knight to d2 which is the tarash here this is very flexible so if you want flexible and just a lot of options you go with knight to d2 Knight to c3 is more just uh, the best way, quotation marks, because this is just very strong. It's solid. It's a lot of play for white. Things can go in white's favor a lot. Here, and you play, you also play e5. You, you go for space, and you play tactics as well with bishop to d2. It's a dynamic way to play. Very, very uh, nice way to play, and it's a classic way to play. You also have the advanced variation, which you have two ways to play it. c5, c3, knight to c6, knight f3. You have uh, the, the Milnerberry Gambit, which is a favorite of mine. That's what I play exclusively now. I've been hitting it with the engine. I've been hitting it with Stockfish. I've been playing GMs with it. I'm loving my Milnerberry Gambit. But you also have A3, which I played before, and I just wasn't the biggest fan of it. I think Harry Krishna actually well, reaches some positions like this in his book about uh, the French and plays uh, the A3 options, actually. So you do have the A3. And then the last thing is actually the um, King's Indian Attack, which is E4, E6, D4, D5. Or sorry, e4, e6, d3, d5, and then knight to d2 for the king's Indian attack kind of way to play, guys. So that's really all you have there in the French there. I highly recommend you check these out and then pick one that you like after you pick the one that you like. Study some games on it. Look at it. Find a player that likes it and study it a lot. Get the experience in. Get those reps in, guys. And then you can start crushing the French. I haven't really had problems with the French, but, um, yeah, it can be problematic if you don't know what you're doing, guys. And actually, recently, maybe like uh, six, seven months ago, I had some problems with the French just not having the best games. And I was like, I need to find something more strong. I came across my Milnaberry in a, uh, a more aggressive fashion, and that's what I'm using now, guys. So thanks so much for watching the video. I hope this helped you guys for the French. If you've got any recommendations on other openings or things like that, Put it in the uh, in the comments under the video, guys. Make sure you grab the links under the video. We do have the membership site up now for you guys with uh, new content and all kind of things for you guys on a daily basis, seven days a week for those videos, guys. So thanks so much for hanging out here, guys. I will see you on the next video.